Hello and welcome to the Mal and Johnny show. Last week I lost my mum and had lots of lovely comments online, but it got me and Johnny thinking about mams and particularly Welsh mams. Tell us a little bit about your mam, Johnny. Well, my mam was um, born in Cardiff. <clears throat> Met my father, who was born up the valleys in a show because they were both in show business. My mother was a dancer. Um, so I, she was a big influence on me because I, a, I traveled with him as a kid. Actually, <coughs> I traveled with him as a kid um, until I was about eight years old. They didn't settle down until I was about eight. Um, and like when I wanted to dance, she, she'd teach me a few steps. And it was always the influence, my mother's influence. But she was, she was one of these people, like, because they were traveling all the time. People said, Why didn't you put John in a boarding school? I said, No, I'm not doing that. Mm. So now I was a child to put him in a school. So I was always with them. You know what I mean? Isn't that lovely? Um, yeah. My mother didn't work much after I was born. My father was the, the main uh, breadwinner. So we were always together. And she was my, like, you know, support. You know, she was great. Yeah. And she was a great cook. And, uh, you know, I remember even just before she went, like I lost my mother a few years back now. She was well into her 80s and I was doing a show called Turn on the Taps, which I'd written all about tap dancers. Right. And I said, look, mum, I need a few more routines here. She was in the garage with me. Now she was 80 odd and she's showing me routines. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> so where did she train then? In, in training Cardiff? In Cardiff, yeah. Uh, Funny enough, with a teacher I went to later called Kitty Slocum, who was well known in the Cardiff area. Yeah. And Kitty, I think, I, I don't know if I'm out of turn yet, but she was one of the few dance teachers who had people who actually went professional. Right. I mean, Irving Davis became a huge choreographer. He used to do the Silla Black shows and uh, all sorts of stuff. And he worked with Paddy Stone on the play. I mean, uh, and she, he was one of her boys uh, a couple of years before me. And then Reese Nelson was another boy in her class. She, he became one of the, the young generation. <laughs> and then I remember going to London once to do an audition for the Talk of the Town, uh, which is the old Hippodrome, you know. And um, Irving Davis was the choreographer and the producer was, uh, what was his name? He was the one that used to do all the, um, the command performances. Les, Leslie something. Anyway, so I do the audition. Didn't tell him beforehand. And then I said... Uh, well, by the way, I think we had the same teacher. It was that I said Kitty. He went, Kitty, my darling Kitty. He said. So, I mean, then we, we had a big friendship. Anyway, go on. So that's where my mother learned. Wow. And uh, I mean, you know, the, the life of a traveling performer in those days when she met your dad, I mean, it was a, it was hard, wasn't it? Being a, a young girl, I suppose, going up and down all these on the touring circuit yeah. all the time. Well, they, she told me that before I was born. She was in a review for two years. <clears throat> and in those days, it was a big deal. The review was run by a guy called Tom Moss, who was a big impresario type. And um, they, were, they had a, their own carriage on the train. So the, the, the carriage would be shunted into, we'll say, uh, um, a Reading or whatever they were. And they'd chain, it would link up to another train. So wherever they were going, right. they had their own carriage. It was, like a, it was wonderful, really. And they'd meet everybody at crew, apparently. That was the crossroads. And all the shows in those days would meet in crew. Where, where you go? Oh, we're going to Manchester. Or, like, we meet on the motorway, don't we? <laughs> but they met on train station. Oh, wow. And then sort of like when you became a perfect... Oh, no, was, she, no, was she proud? Was she proud of you, Johnny? Yes. And um, at the beginning, I think they, they didn't really want me to go into show business because... They knew it was a hard business, and if you make it, you make it. If you don't, um, so they really gave the business up to give me a bit of an education. That's where they went and lived in a, in, a, in my state, took a pub. That's why I was brought brought up there. And then when I said I wanted to dance, um, my mother's old dance teacher came up to the pub one night, and she was you know getting on a bit those days, and and she said, I said, oh, I've just seen that bloke on TV. I said that Roy Castle, wonderful. I, I'd love to be like tap dance like him. She said, well, come down to the studio, I'll teach you. And that's how I went then, see, to the same teacher. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah, but my mother was a, a fantastic cook. And my grandmother was a fantastic cook. And, and, and she could do anything. She could make anything. Make a, I, I want a jacket, my mother, she'd make it. You know what I mean? Wow, isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Yeah, yeah. So my mother... How about your yeah, mother? Was she a big influence on your life? Yeah, so a ma massive influence. Um, brought up in Swansea. Went through the Blitz. 
you know. So yeah. she t- always told the story about the first night of the, the Swansea Blitz because they lived in a place called Landor, and although the Germans were apparently were trying to bomb the docks, they were, they weren't, weren't far from all the the works, you know, like the steel right, works, yeah, and yeah. The, the copper works, and all that. So. Um, you know, the first day, of the, and they knew it was coming because they, you know, they weren't really supposed to, but they'd listened to Lord Haw Haw on the radio saying, "All oh, right, you know, yeah. Swansea, it's your turn next," sort of thing. We come to come and visit you tonight, so they knew it was happening. And uh, uh, first night, they stayed under the kitchen table, and because the bombs dropped so quickly, so closely to the house, all the soot came down. So they walked up this morning, they, and they were covered in soot. Wow. Um, the second night, in a, in the crypt of the chapel, in the underground of a chapel, and the third night, they went to stay then in with because they didn't know how long it was going to last. They went stay with family yeah, yeah. Um, you know did well in school and then after becoming a teacher they couldn't get any jobs in Swansea in, in Wales so they she and about three or four friends moved to to London to Leightonstone right. and I think they had a whale of a time you know these these uh, you know they were there they, they were experienced I mean terrifying because the the, the bombers the uh, you know the doodle bugs and the v2 bombers were coming in yeah, yeah. And just dropping anywhere in East London in particular so they saw some terrible sights but she said you know doing the Lambeth walk and the okie cokey on VJ yeah. still stuck with her but yeah no tremendous and it, you know it's a bit it, so my parents weren't in show business no so when I you know wanted to sign to a record company it was terrifying for them I think I and, suppose it was really yeah you know because all, all they it's ever, funny you know talking about the war I mean Cardiff and Swansea got really hammered didn't they oh yeah yeah, yeah. and then and my, my, my parents were telling me well my grandma's roof was blown off and they had to move out they, <laughs> uh, they were like, down the cellar you know anyway yeah. But what I was saying, you, you reminded me then, your mother in London, my parents were in London in shows as well, you see. You know, the and they said the shows never closed. No. They'd get the alarm and they'd all go under the stage and stay there till the, till the, the silence went off. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Because my mum was in, in London at the same time as your mum. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, I, I was talking to somebody the other day, we're just a bit off topic here, but um, the, the Swansea Air Club. You know, they had yep. people there who were quite uh, aged flyers, you know. And I think one was called Heinrich and the other one. Anyway, so they, they're, they're having their dinner and they bring their log books. And one f- was a German, so he flew for Germany during the war, you know, got capped for Germany during the war. And then the other lad uh, was Czechoslovakian and he'd been he'd been flying, uh, you know, uh, Spitfires or whatever the, the, the equivalent were, little planes to, to guard the bombers. They checked their flights, yeah. you know, their log books. They were both over the over the same sky in Berlin at the same time oh, on wow. opposite sides. And it just shows you how ridiculous. Oh, war is ridiculous. The whole is thing ridiculous. is ridiculous. Stupid people take us down stupid yeah. roads. I flew out to Swansea Airport once with Stan Stennis. What, what was it like? <laughs> he had his plane there and we were doing Panther in Swansea Grand. He said, come on, we'll go up in a plane. I said, I, all right. I've never been in a small plane before. And uh, he said, we'd take a couple of the girls with us. So we took a couple of the dancers with us. They were frightened to death. They were screaming. <laughs> anyway, he said, you want to take over, John? I said, what are you talking about? I can't play a play. He said, that's easy. He said, just because it was dual, you know, dual thing. He said, I'll take off. I'll not let you. Do it. No, you can take off, he said, because you can't land it. So I said, well, how do I do it? He said, well, you just grab all of the thing, you know, the, the yeah. steering wheel, as it were. And he said, you get up to a certain speed. I'll tell you when. And you just ease it back slowly. No two jerky movements, right? I said, okay. So I don't know how fast we were going, about 80 or 90 miles an hour. And I just started to pull it away. And up it goes. Yeah. And I said, what well, is this wonderful feeling? He said, no jerky movements right to the left. He said, just keep it nice and steady. So I'm up there. And he said, you, are, you have a bit of a bank. And I'm doing all this. <laughs> <laughs> and these girls in the back are screaming. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so that's my, my one up... Uh, Sortie out of Swansea Airport. John, Johnny, take me to the pilot. My dad was um, was it was was in the Fleet Air Arm. He was only you know, oh, all right, yeah, nineteen, I think nineteen or twenty in the Fleet Air Arm, and he was being taught to fly. And he's in oh, was tra- that the Navy? Yeah, that I think Navy, it, yeah, it's it? a Navy wing of the of the Air the Force, air, is it? Whatever the air it is, force, yeah, yeah. And um, he, his instructor took him up, and he said uh, it's a bit like you. So he took took off and flew around a bit, and he said, right, I want you to land now. My dad said, well, no one's ever taught me to land. And he said, are you refusing to land? And my dad said, well, I've, I've never been taught. And he said, I'm right, failing you now. So oh. whether, whether, they, whether he spotted that my dad wasn't, you know, <laughs> squadron leader material or whether it was because of that. But, you know, it's yeah. probably the best thing that ever happened to my dad because the death rate in the uh, fleet air on was, was something oh phenomenal. Oh, my God, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So back to, yeah, back to mams then. So influences yeah. on this. So my mum, uh, we just cleared out her, her room now. Oh. Uh, yeah. 
And That's always just, a sad thing, isn't it? Oh yeah, all those all those dresses that will never be worn again. Yeah, all those cardigans. yeah. And you remember when my grandfather died? I went and collected his stuff from there, and it was his shaving brush, and oh, it brought tears to my eyes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I've been saying all week, I'm fine now. No, it, you know, she's in a better place, and she wasn't well, and all that. And I walked in and <laughs> burst into tears. Um, but there were things like she she kept all my cuttings, you know, all the because oh, uh, yeah, I yeah. write for the Evening Post every week. Uh, there was a whole pile of them there that she yeah. that she'd cut out from the paper. Um, right. And it's all the old photographs, isn't it? And you suddenly remember, you know, because obviously, we're, you know, your mum starts off as being big and then you're small and then you're the big. Way, and she's, right. she's well, right. I remember, you know, there was a coat there and I remember huddling underneath it, you know, in the winter, coming out of the gospel hall, you know, it must have been two, three or four, something like that, you know, hiding under my mum's coat. And it, it just brought back so many... It's a funny thing to bring back memories of your parents, isn't it? You know, pieces yeah, of paper, yeah. notebooks, diaries, that sort of thing. That's right, that's right. But, but I've been memorabilia. I mean, I got so much stuff here of my father's and my mother's from shows they were in, you know. Yeah. And I must do something with them. I, I was speaking to Kerry Stennett. He said, well, you don't want to just check them out. Said, if you, you know, once you go, your kids won't know anything about them. Yeah. He said, when you go into the archives, people in Cardiff, and I might do that. Because they're be very lovely. interesting, you know, playbills and things, you know. Yeah. And once, as you say, once they're gone, they're gone. They're gone. That's right. So, yeah, yeah. So last, and they had, yeah. they had, you know, very interesting lives, really. I mean, what a, you know, amazing, you know, to touring yeah. around like like that. Uh, so last thing they were on, was, they were on an NCC. Oh, they, they were. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. The, well, the war broke out. They were in these shows, and um, my mother had had enough of this review. She had had enough of this. She had been in for two, and she went for an audition at the Drury Lane Theatre, and she, she got a, as a dancer. She got in NSA in the, the Claude Helbert show, right? right? Right, So she says to my old man, when you come, she said, he said, oh, I can't leave the band. Now he said, yes, you can, come on, come and do it. So he went up and did the audition, he got in it as well. And then they dragged my auntie Nell, who was a, my mother's sister, who was a dancer. Too. So they were all in this show together. Isn't and they toured right through the war then. They didn't go abroad, only in this country. Right. And she said, it was amazing, she said, because every, every place we went to, the garrisons and that, you know, and you see all these boys, and they'd all be dressed up with their gear on ready, and the, the sign on the wall, and they say, "Oh, Mr." And then you see them leaving when they were called, you know. And we we often thought, you know, how many of them are going to come back? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Amazing so, but time. they said they had some fun on them, sir. Yeah, isn't that brilliant? Every what was it stand for? Every everything. No, the Win Calvin had a funny phrase. Every night something awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <and> I say. <laughs> Uh, but um, you know, and uh, you know, you say you lost your mum quite some time ago now, but you never forget your mother's love. It's absolutely fantastic. oh, that's right. That's it. And another thing I, I I miss because she knew a lot of stuff about well my business as well. If I want to ask her something, I can't. She's not here. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 for instance, you know that singer that was with, I can't ask her. She's not here anymore. And there's nobody else I can ask because they're all gone. That that era is gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's been good, good remembering, good remembering. And then, you've got to uh, remember. Yeah. Never forget. Never forget. All right. Well, look, have a, have a great, uh, have a great. Um, I think we're going to take next week off. I think we're going to take. Next yeah, week let's off. have a week off. You've got a lot to do, and you've got everything sorted out because yeah. I know all the situation. I've been through it, yes. and you've got to clear everything up and you know tie all the loose ends up and so on. Fantastic. I'm sorry about your mummy's loss, but there you go. Yeah. She had a great life, and uh, she kept all your cuttings. Get on the cuttings. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, you know. All right, Johnny. So I, I'll see you in a week next week. The week after. Week next. after next. All right. Have a have a lovely right. time, and I'll speak to you soon. All right, all right, my boy. Ta-da, God bless. Ta-da. Ta-da.